Greetings, this is Professor Lazarus again, and today we will talk about inventory. Before I get into the specifics, I'm going to step aside for a minute and give you a chance to write down some of the information I have on the whiteboard behind me, and then I'll be right back. Okay, inventory, if it's a merchandising firm, inventory can be broadly defined as inventory as merchandise for resale. And typically, merchandising firms have one inventory account only. If it's a manufacturing firm, they tend to have at least three inventory accounts. What are they? You have raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. What do each of these inventory accounts mean? Raw materials inventory. Assume that a company manufactures tables and let's assume that wood is the main ingredient, main element that goes into this uh, table. So that being the case, at the end of the month, if you took all the unused wood that has not entered the production process yet and looked at the value, calculated the value of that wood, the unused wood, that would constitute your raw materials inventory. Work in process inventory, again assume that at the end of the month, the company had about 50 or 60 partially finished tables. If you were to hypothetically take the value of all of these partially finished tables, that would constitute the value of your work in process inventory. Finished goods, again at the end of the month, the company has about 100 fully finished tables waiting to be sold, not yet sold to its customers. So the value of these fully finished tables unsold would constitute the value of your finished goods inventory. And all of these inventory accounts are assets and specifically they are current assets. There are two major inventory accounting systems, periodic inventory and perpetual inventory. In this illustration we are about to get into, we will talk about calculations using the periodic inventory method. So let's get right into the example that I have outlined for you on the whiteboard. Assume that a company has zero beginning inventory, no units at all. Then on January 2nd, they purchased 50 units at a unit cost of $20 per unit for a total batch cost of $1,000. Then on January 7th, they purchased 60 units at a unit cost of $25 per unit for a total batch cost of $1,500. Next, on January 14th, they purchased 80 units at a unit cost of $35 per unit for a total batch cost of $2,400. And finally, on the 28th, they purchased 30 units at a unit cost of $35 per unit for a total batch cost of $1,050. In addition to this information, at the end of the month on January 31st, you are told that the ending inventory for this company is 40 units. Based on this data, we should be able to calculate how many units the company sold. How do we do that? We add up all of the units purchased, plus the beginning inventory, which is zero, minus the ending inventory. And that's a calculation we have down here. That's 50 plus 60 plus 80 plus 30 minus your 40 units of ending inventory gives you a total of 180 units sold. So this is the data at this point. Now based on all of this information, we're going to start 
calculating the ending inventory as well as the cost of goods sold. In this lecture, we'll talk about calculating your ending inventory and your cost of goods sold using the FIFO method, which is first in, first out. And again, this is a periodic inventory system. What does this first in, first out method mean? What this means is that for calculation purposes, we accountants assume that the first units purchased are the first units sold. In other words, we sell the units in the same sequence that we buy them. So please keep that in mind. First in, first out. First out of the door, that is. Okay, so your cost of goods sold. To calculate the cost of goods sold, we know from our previous calculations that we have sold 180 units. So we have to now try to figure out where did the 180 units come from? Which batch or batches did the 180 units come from? And I have given you the details here. So first we sold the January 2nd purchase of 50 units. Our cost again was $20. So the, our cost of goods sold of this particular batch was $1,000. Next we sold the batch from January 7th, 60 units. And again, our cost was $25 per unit. So our cost of goods sold was $1,500 on this batch. Then we sold 70 units only of the 80 units. If you recall, we had purchased 80 units, but we only sold 70 of the 80 units, again, at a unit cost of 30 for a total of $2,100. Why only 70? Because remember, we are trying to account for the 180 units that we sold. And if you add up the 50 plus the 60 plus the 70, that gives you your 180 units that you sold. Again, 50 units plus 60 units plus the 70 units make up the 180 units that we sold. And so our cost of goods sold then would be to add up all of these individual totals for a total of $4,600. Next, we do the calculations for the ending inventory under FIFO. The ending inventory, what units remain? If you recall, we had sold 70 of the 80 units from January 14th, which means we have another 10 units remaining from our January 14th purchase. And the cost of those 10 units was $30 per unit for a total cost of $300. And then we have the entire 30 units remaining from which purchase? January 28th, that's correct. Our cost again was $35 per unit. Total cost again was 1,050. So our ending inventory composition is as follows. And the value of our ending inventory under the FIFO method is 1,350. Now, there's an alternative way to calculate your cost of goods as well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, we calculate another item called cost of goods available for sale. Cost of goods available for sale. And to do that, that is nothing but taking all of these purchases together. That's your 1,000 plus 1,500 plus 2,400 plus 1,050. If you add up all of them, you get 5,950. That's your cost of goods available for sale. And from that cost of goods available for sale, if you subtract your ending inventory that we calculated above, which was 1,350, that's 5,950 minus 1,350 ending inventory would give you your cost of goods sold. So I've shown you two different ways to calculate your cost of goods sold. And that pretty much wraps up our discussion on calculating inventory using the FIFO method under the periodic inventory system. Again, this is Professor Lazarus saying goodbye. And as I always like to say, we accountants work our assets off. Thank you.